Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio uh, with Crastorio 2 and Space Exploration or Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 whichever way around you say it, it's the same mod it's, it's, it uh, extends Factorio way off into the distance you go off to space, you find loads of new resources and you have Crastorio 2 to make it all harder while you're doing it <laughs> As ever, the channel is sponsored by Trefoil.be go to Trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays follow the link in the description to get 20% off your next server purchase uh, server hosting services posts, but they don't sell hardware. They sell servers. They sell hosting services. <laughs> there we go. Let's try and get that right. So this is part two of the video. So in the last one, I talked about what uh, what I'd been doing, what Tristan had been doing, and that was getting rockets launched, building up mines, getting green circuits produ produced, uh, getting the air cleaned all the way around here um, well actually no to be fair Mike did that bit I, I did up here and by the mines as well and Tristan's been setting up stations and doing train stuff so he's got the um, bits in here the stations in here to get the uh, uh, the green circuits up and, up and ready he's done these the stations along here and also I nearly forgot to mention he's also been he, uh, got the um, got a building um, landfill again because as you've seen we've got we've got some lakes that are kind of in the way so at the moment we've got a, a trickle in fact actually no we've got all of the um, all of the rare metal ore coming through into here and being passed down and turned into landfill and that means we've made a whole 381 great <laughs> oh dear right so uh, what what has everyone else been doing well let's 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 start with mark because that's probably that that's going to be the headline for this video so mark has, has gone in and done the uh, the oil processing so i'd been saying in the previous uh, previous videos that we had this sort of pathetic little oil processing area over here which is so pathetic it's actually been taken away now um, and possibly reused for spare parts so what we had we had we had a handful of um, refineries along in, the, in this gap along here we had some refineries along here we we're doing some cracking to get down to light oil uh, which was being hang on what oh turned into petroleum that's there we go and we're turning the heavy oil into 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 um, into lube which we're passing down onto the bus for sure this I think is also going to be temporary um, and then the the light oil and the petroleum gas are being passed over here and then going into these gas power stations they're new and we're just burning them off to, to make a bit of electricity because we were very short of electricity we had some major brownout problems but I'll talk again I'll talk about that a bit later on so over here we have a system where uh, it's now been somewhat expanded. We've got a drop-off station here um, for, for oil. So the oil is being dropped off here, um, pumped through into these tanks. Now, we've got the usual sort of system here where the train will um, wait here until there is an, an oil mine that has enough oil available to fill the train up. Then it'll go over there and it'll wait there until there's an oil drop-off station that has enough space in it for the oil to be dropped off. So in this case, the, this, this station is already... I think it already probably has about enough space in it. Um, not quite sure. This slightly oddly balanced. I think we could do with some extra pipes across here just to keep everything, keep all of these in balance with each other. But yeah, never mind. It'll it'll work. Um, and so what we're doing from no, Mark's done this very strangely. I don't I don't, I don't think I approve of this system. Um, but any, uh, maybe, maybe he's only calling for a new train when 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 there's absolutely no oil whatsoever. Let's have a look. No, still less than 100,000. Yeah, this this isn't going to work, Mark. You're going to have, you're going to get to the point where all the oil is emptied out of. It's going to get emptied out of. Yeah, so we're going to empty these tanks into these tanks, and it's going to get pushed over here. But I seem to be emptying this one first, actually. So I think we're going to get to the point where these tanks are full or nearly full, and these ones are empty. And then another train is going to get summoned, and then we're going to have problems with it unloading, because it's not going to be able to unload over here. So I think what we need is pipes going all, basically, a pipe in there where that power cable is, and then an underground pipe across there, and a pipe there, just to keep these all in balance. And then we just have have the whole thing, essentially, is one big tank across the top, one big tank across the bottom, although trying to keep more of it on this side. That's, that's okay, I think. But yeah, so I, I think a little bit of tweaking is going to be required there, or we might see some problems later. I, I hope you watched this video, Mark, or I've just give, uh, I've just uh, criti uh, criticised you for nothing. I do apologise. Anyway, that's coming down here. We're, we're refining that now. Now, Mike, Mark has done something a bit different from what I normally do. I normally go for lots and lots and lots of this recipe and um, and then use the cracking to split it down and to get the light oil and the petroleum gas. Because this one, this one produces the heavy oil, the light oil and the petroleum gas in, 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 in proportions. So you get more this is this is the heavy oil heavy recipe so it produces more heavy oil uh, than the other two and then I'll, so I'll go with that one and then crack it down from there whereas Mark's been actually this is probably a bit more efficient um, because he's now got the this one here that produces the uh, the light oil heavy recipe so it still produces a bit of heavy oil but it produces more of the light oil and a bit of a bit of petroleum gas and then loads up here producing massive quantities of petroleum gas because you always need lots of, you always need more petroleum gas than the others 
Um, but I suppose part of it is probably because I play, started playing Factorio when you didn't have these recipes. You only had the standard oil refining recipe that produces all three of them. And then you have to go from there, basically. But this actually is going, yeah, this is going to be probably a bit neater and just generally a bit, a bit more efficient because you're not going to need anything like as much cracking going on. And so we're then collecting the, um, the light oil, the heavy oil, the petroleum gas in the tanks here. Petroleum gas is then taken off over here where it's made into sulphur and plastic. And that gets chucked into, into the stations over here, as everything else does, in order for the trains to be able to pick it up and take it away or put it on the bus. Because we need it on the bus and we weren't producing it in large enough quantities before. Now, as it is, we're producing, we're producing two belts of, of, of sulphur and one of plastic. That feels the wrong way around to me, but it might just be the number of machines that, fit, that, that were fitted in there. And, maybe, maybe, and this could probably be tweaked later. Um, but that said, if we look over here, we will see that we have... Um, almost 400 stacks of, of uh, plastic in each one of these. So at the moment, this is more than enough plastic production. We have plenty of plastic. I'm not going to complain about it. The proportions feel wrong, but it doesn't matter because we've got more than we need of absolutely everything. So that's using up a load of the petroleum gas. Even more of it is being used up here to produce electricity. So these are, um, these are gas power stations. They burn the petroleum gas, they produce electricity, and massive quantities of pollution. If we look over there, we can see that we're producing 125% pollution, apparently. So that, that, sound, that sounds pretty bad, because that's more than 100. And if we turn this on, yeah, we can see there's a massive, horrible pollution spike over here. Now, there are um, air purifiers down here, which is stopping the pollution getting out down the bottom of this area. But it is drifting this way, and eventually it's going to go over the, round, over, over the water, probably around here to some extent. And probably through here, over this wall, which doesn't have any air scrubbers on it yet, and upset these bites. And it's generally spread out and make cause cause eventual problems so i think it's going to be worth i think one of the things we should do next time is put in a ring belt round here like i did with the mining drills and just clean this air clean up the air in this area keep it a bit a bit cleaner so that we're not just spreading out massive quantities of pollution um whether turning petroleum gas into electricity is the best idea given that oil is finite in this mod pack i don't know i mean at the moment we have plenty of oil available and we have well, I say we have plenty of oil available. The fact that this train is sitting here shows that whatever mine is digging it up at the moment doesn't have a full uh, train's worth available at the moment. But I think we're probably going to be okay for a while on that because we do have hundreds of thousands of oil. I think uh, there's there's well, there's a sort of mine there. It's not linked up to anything, so that's fairly pointless. Um, oh, there it is. Yes, here we go. So the oil is being dug up here because it's awkwardly in the middle of the uh, smelting area and fed into these tanks here. So these are gradually gradually filling up. And when they're when they've got enough, at the moment they've got. 81,000. When they get to 100,000, we'll send the train out from here to pick some more up. So we've got like three and a half million there. So I think we're going to be okay for a little while. And three, three and a half, almost three and a half million there. Two and a half million there. I think we're, we're going to be all right for a little while. It's not too. I think at the moment we're going to be okay doing the doing, but producing power like this. But it's something I'd like to move away from as and when we can. But you know, you need you need the base load generation, and, and at this stage of the game, that means you burn coal or you burn. Um, oil in some form or another or you have massive massive quantities of wind turbines uh, which I can't we had it we had a quantity of wind turbines I can't find them now I don't know but they wind turbines produce so were they up here no wind turbines produce so little power they're barely worth having um, so we've just got rid of most of them and we, we do we, we have been known to use them a little bit along the walls when it's only powering the inserters to put the uh, the um, the ammunition into the turrets but they're not they don't produce enough power to keep the radars going so all the all the air purifiers so they're, they're pretty much useless there so yeah i think we're, we're going to be sticking with this sort of thing for at least for a little while maybe we can move over to biogas at some point because that seems to be a bit of a I'm not going to say it's. I'm not going to say it's, it's. It's a hack or an OP or an imbalance or anything like that. But you can make um, biogas, biofuel. Sorry, um, from fuel and biomethanol. You can make fuel from. Hmm. Okay. I was under the impression there was a way of making. Maybe you just burn the biomethanol. Can that be burned in a? I was under the impression <laughs> that there was a way of making this, uh, basically making one of the bio, one of the fuels for 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 just for, from basically basically you basically make it from wood and stuff you can pull in from the air. So maybe you can make solid fuel from light oil from. Mm, I don't know. I'm, I I can't remember exactly how you do this, but there is a way <laughs> to make basically to make um, electricity from nothing but water. So what you do is you pro you process the fuel, you process the wood into biomethanol, and then you use that uh, to power a, a power station, and then you use that to power 
the um, the greenhouses and I think that is a net power positive so you get out more energy than you put in which you sort of hope you would because trees are basically because I mean a greenhouse is basically a solar power solar power a power plant and wood is a sort of a battery it just doesn't use as much resources as some of the other battery production we can do so yeah we've got we'll probably look into that in a future episode um, so that's that's yeah that's being done over here that's so we're bringing in the coal as well for the um, for the, for the for making the plastic and um, yeah, we've got a, a, a smattering of stations around here and a slightly odd arrangement. Um, okay, we've got a right. Okay, we've got a stacker here for the unloaders and a stacker here for the loaders. That makes that makes sense. Okay, and the other thing we're doing down here, which is quite exciting, is we're make we're doing the um, the rocket fuel from oil recipe because as I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the rocket, this system here is incredibly slow. We're producing one. <laughs> it's so slow. Oh, two. It's so slow, I don't even know how, how what sort of speed this is running at, but it's it, it's a bit feeble. We're producing rocket fuel very, very slowly. Now, that was enough to get my first couple of satellites off. Fine. It, it, it was good enough for that, but I think we're going to want to pump, be pumping that a little bit quicker, because fairly soon, we're going to start wanting to launch cargo rockets. They take a huge amount of fuel, and we're going to start wanting to go off to explore other planets in order to get the exotic metals that we're going to need for future science production and things like that, and future technologies. And that means we're going to need to go out and ex explore other planets are that we're going to need to find other places in the in the astro in the, in the in the solar system, and to find these, that means you need to launch large numbers of rockets. You typically you get one extra location with each rocket you launch, but it might not be the one you want. So you need to keep plugging them out at a reasonable rate. So hence the station here to drop fuel off. Hence the uh, the system here that's making fuel at a much much higher rate. I couldn't even tell you what rate it's making it at because as you can see, it's completely filled up this belt that goes all the way up here, and then filled up these stations over here, these these warehouses over here. Now these aren't going to be actually full, are they? They're going to be. Oh, they are actually full because you're limited to ten per stack. So we've made a massive quantity of rocket fuel, like two warehouses full. In fact, if we look in here, we can look up rocket fuel, solid rocket over a longer period, please. Solid rocket fuel, that one. Um. Yeah, so at the moment, we are making rock solid rocket fuel at about... That's 55 in 10 minutes, 5 per minute. Right, okay, that yeah, that works. 5 per minute. Whereas before, if we look back here, this is this will have been when Mark's system actually kicked into full speed. I don't know why there's a dip here. Possibly it was a shortage of oil. But at peak, it was making 146 per minute. Um, and that's much better. We, um, I approve of that. However, it does take quite a lot of oxygen. So for each one of these fuel machines over here, there is... I'm not even. I'm not going to count these. I'm going to do that. There is 23, um, 23 air um, atmospheric condensers pulling oxygen out of the air, pumping it down the pipe in order to make that fuel. Because if we look in here, we can see that in order to make a a single rocket fuel takes a thousand oxygen and a hundred light oil and an iron plate um, to produce. That's to produce one rocket fuel, which isn't very many. It isn't very much. We need a lot more than that. Um, but it, take, but it only takes one second to run that recipe. So we need to produce a thousand oxygen a second. Each one of these can produce 300 oxygen every 10 seconds, so 30 per second. So in order to get that thousand per second, you need rather a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's done that. I mean, fair play. Built up a decent supply of oxygen condensers here. When we're just, uh, yeah, we're getting rocket fuel faster than we currently need it. Now later on, we may find that this isn't enough, but it can be copied and pasted. That's not going to be that's not going to be too much of an issue. Now the interesting question here is how much power is that have those been using? So ten hours ago, how much power were the um, atmospheric condensers using? That's the, this one. They were used, so they 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 were peaking at about 22 megawatts, which to be fair, it's quite a lot of power, but it's not that much given that it was producing uh, 150 rocket fuel per per minute. So yeah, pretty happy with that. I think that's that's going to be a that's going to be good for a good while. We're gonna we're gonna be absolutely fine with that level of rocket fuel production. I think for, until we start trying to use rockets to take stuff to take to do interplanetary logistics so just sending off an occasional rocket probably with somebody on it in order to go and explore a new planet <clears throat> this will probably be fine because you don't need to do it quickly and regularly but if we get to the point where we start to use cargo rockets to ship goods around we may need to expand but at the moment this is almost free the oxygen is free apart from the electricity used to generate it the oil I say the oil is no the oil is not free we're using quite a lot of oil for this and we're using a little bit of iron, but the iron the iron's cheap, I don't care about that. The only real concern here is the oil. However, as discussed earlier, we have discovered an oily moon. 
so potentially we can go out to this oily moon and we can start making massive quantities of rocket fuel there and then shipping it back by rocket because we'll have loads of rocket fuel it's still i don't know if that's going to be the best way because of how poorly it stacks we'll, we'll bring back five thousand at a time i don't know we shall see how it goes we may decide that um we want a secret option number three which we haven't haven't invented yet so yes mark has got all of the oil recipes happening here and we think this is probably pretty much everything that's going to be needed the um the solid fuel down here as it turns out is needed for yellow science which i'm going to talk about in a bit more detail in a bit uh, so that was squeezed in there i think there might have been one more thing that should be needs to be produced but basically this is all of, this is pretty much everything that needs to be done in the oil oil areas and then is just shipping it all out to, to be taken to to wherever it's needed so if we put up if we put up an area that makes the um Low, low density structures for example we'll pull the plastic from here we'll pull the steel from and the copper from the steel and copper smeltery area up north so yeah that's that's all going well uh plastic sulfur lube rocket fuel yes he's also done some um a bit of sort of inc increasing the rate of things on some of the things on the bus so big big motors uh, along here the, the, we we obviously apparently didn't have enough of them um, i'm not sure what for maybe that maybe they needed for the atmospheric condensers that would make sense given how many of those he was using um so he's expanded that he's been doing bits of bits of cleanup um i did do spend a a little bit of time putting in some of some yellow chests in places like here where this one asks this one is specifically limited to uh, this is what i was talking about last time this one will call in any iron that gets dumped onto the system and then put it back into the in, into the in, onto, onto the bus so there's a few of these around but um i got bored of doing that fairly quickly and sort of stopped doing it oh one of the things i did do <laughs> one of the running themes we did have um <clears throat> was people putting things in in ways that then needed couldn't couldn't be expanded quite the way we wanted them to <laughs> so um mark put in yes mark put in a system down here building um building iron steel chests and then making red chests from it I went along there and went, hang on a minute, you're only making red chests, there are other types of log logistics chests as well. So I pulled that up a bit, and we now have that passing them out onto this belt here, there's loads of steel chests along here, and we're now making red and yellow. And then up here later, once we've done the research, we can do blue and purple and green, and just have all of them available up here and going into, into red, or possibly actually more likely green chests by that point if we, if we want to do things properly. So yeah, well, uh, this is now expandable, and we've got everything we need. Well, those belts need to be a little bit longer. But basically, we've got everything we need along here in order to uh, make all of the types of logistics chests. We're not making any of the logistics um, warehouses. Maybe we should be. Maybe we shouldn't. Or maybe we'll just throw those together when we when we actually need them. Because if we look at um, uh, say a storage warehouse, all that is is a warehouse and a massive quantity of circuits. So I mean, we've got most of the stuff in down here. But I don't think we're going to need those in sufficiently large quantities. It's probably going to be easier just to make those by hand. Um, oh, here come the bots to do that belt bit of building that I just requested. Um, and on a similar note, um, Mike had criticisms for my belt production facility. So over here, I have I've been I uh, set up a facility that's making lots and lots of uh, yellow belts in order to feed them into here um, to make the. Um, to make for yellow belts because you need yellow belts also to make under yellow underground into uh, splitters and um, loaders uh, now mike quite rightly pointed out i didn't leave the room for future expansion that we're going to need for this so he's put in the red um, red belt construction up here which is kind of ugly i have to admit but also kind of my fault <laughs> so we've got loads and loads of cogs being built here and being made into all of the um, all the different types all, all the different types of red belt bits and pieces along here and now we're reckoning that red belts are probably cheap enough that um we can now just start using them generally rather than um use, rather than using yellow belts in general so potentially we can stop using these we can stop making these to quite the, the level we are um that said i think i was going to say i think there's, there's rules on these inserters to make sure there's always a few yellow belts available but it doesn't look like there is so but it's it, it's okay at the moment there's plenty of everything um and we'll have decent numbers of red belts hopefully uh three and three three points half seven thousand that's quite a lot so we'll have lots of stuff to make all of it yet so we can now start using red belts a bit more liberally and hopefully there's going to be room up here to then put the blue belts and the green belts and the purple belts whatever order they're in all in up here and just get yeah get everything running really really quickly i bet there won't be i bet we'll um, realize that we've made some sort of hideous mistake in here and need to need to replace everything but if we do we can always just put a new <clears throat> better thought through belt factory on the end of the bus wherever the end of the bus happens to be at that point so it's not the end of the world if this is a bit rubbish but um it's certainly better now than it was when i when i built my bit of it <laughs> <clears throat> 
Mark and Tristan also did an emergency power thing, apparently. So I'm not quite sure what exactly what happened. Um, hopefully one of them will let us know in the comments. But I do know that we had we had a massive power cut across the entire base, ran out of power completely, and now we have a big petrol power plant here. Um, and I'm not sure what so I'm not sure what caused it. Maybe we ran out of processed fuel down here. Uh, sorry, down here for this for this power plant. Maybe we. I don't know. I don't know. Something happened and we ran out of power. So there was a, there was a running around of running and screaming there. But uh, Mark and Tristan managed to fix that. Um, he's apparently also guarded big oil with a power switch. So, oh, I see. There's a, a switch and an accumulator in here. What are you, what are you doing? So if this accumulator drops below 90%, the switch will turn off. Ah, I see. Right. So yes, this means that if we have um, if we have a power shortage. In the base, so the base, say, say we we I don't know, ran an umbrella defence or something like that, something that used or anything using massive, massive quantities of power, and we that was slurping up all of the power that was available in the base. Then down here, this would drop. This this accumulator would drop to ninety percent. So this switch would open. Yeah, as you see, he hasn't put in a hysteresis thing, but that doesn't matter. It can flicker all it wants. I don't care about that. Flickering is fine. But that means that then we'll still have this power plant here. We'll keep all of the oil processing running in order to ensure that we always have enough petroleum gas to keep this power plant running. So this this area will become a little self-contained power plant. Ooh, an oil train has arrived. Um, become a self-contained power plant and we'll just keep itself running and we don't so we don't need to worry quite so much about um about a brownout destroying the power generation capacity for the base <laughs> so that's that's a big improvement so my prediction has come true um this 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 wagon hasn't been able to empty properly um now to an extent it probably doesn't matter well i don't know maybe it, maybe it matters maybe it doesn't because this, this, the train, train doesn't need to go anywhere because we have plentiful oil at this point, so it can just sit there. But I have this slight concern. I don't know, it, dep it depends on how quickly we start to get through this oil. I think at the moment this is going to actually be okay, but it, in the future, if we start to get through oil a bit faster, we might start to have problems with this. So um, I do still feel a little bit uneasy about this about this system here because it's yeah, it's causing this imbalance sort of problem. We'll see. We'll see if if if, uh, if anyone considers it worth fixing in the next stream. I guess. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Mark has also put the air scrubbers along here. That was la that was in the, the in the last stream, not on the one before. I, I have to admit, I wasn't sure when he did it, but it was in, in the last stream that he put the air scrubbers in along here. And those are the ones that are dealing with the, a lot of the pollution that's coming out from the uh, from the um, from the petrol powered the gas turbines up here. Um, yeah, I still think we want more more around here to, to keep everything a bit cleaner. But you know that can happen later. That's fine. So that's uh, Mark talked about. The next one, next one in the list is Mike. So, um, and I've, I've managed to get the names the right way around, at least so far this time, because uh, they, they <laughs> I know who is who. I'm fully aware of which of my friends is which, but they sound similar enough that occasionally I trip over my own tongue. So, um, one of Mark's, see, just like that, one of Mike's big things was felt finishing off all of the uh, smeltery stuff up here. So we have, um, we've we've had the iron, the copper, the stone bricks steel um running for quite a while the oh and the yeah the the uh, rare metals was was done in the previous previous run as well um but now we've got we've got the pulverizers for the stone here that's making the glass i think that was actually being done as well but more importantly that's now being turned into the um the sand is also being turned into quartz and then coming down here to be turned into silicon which is the thing i touched on earlier we now have a supply of silicon and some missing belts down here, um, but we have a supply of silicon being p passed over into these trains, which is which is being taken down to be made into the red circuits and the, the other other things that require electronic components. So this that that was the the big thing here. Um, however, we do still have the aforementioned problem with a complete lack of stone that I was talking about earlier. So um, that's a problem. Um, where does stone even come? Oh, stone comes in over here and gets put into this belt, right? Um, so yeah, the, the lack of stone to be made into sand is. It's a, it's a major problem with the uh, with the system running as it is. Look, there's there's, there's a piece coming through. Great, um, because we are eventually going to run out of silicon. So that's hence the uh, all the stone mines I was talking about earlier. We're going to need to go off and get a lot more stone in on this. Uh, now this also I th oh core mining has jammed up. That's interesting. What have we got? Too so we've got too much oil. Right. So. We might need to have a look at the priority system and make sure that oil gets picked up from this station first. Oh, there's <laughs> right. Okay, uh, this is this is my fault. I never finished off this station because all of the oil was being used by this by the process by the stuff over here. So 
yeah, high up on the priority to-do list is come over here, whack in a couple of pumps in here, get this summoning trains over to come and take this oil away so we stop so we stop having this problem. Actually, there's none in here. Okay, thing next, high on my priority list is come over here and find out what the bloomin' heck is going on. I mean, we need a couple, need a couple of pipes in there, then we can take the oil across there, and then we can get a train to come and take it away. Right, okay, that should, fingers crossed, deal help deal with this, but yeah, there's some definite fixing need, need needs doing here, and I think... Uh, I think I, I think I'm prepared to take the blame for this because I certainly didn't put the pumps in over here, um, and I think I probably cut off the supply just because I didn't want these tanks to fill up. So yeah, we'll um, I'll go in and do something about that at some point. Uh, do I have any pumps around here? I mean I I don't know why I'm sort of going around kind of fixing things in here. It's because as I say we're not gonna I'm not I'm not, even, I'm not gonna save this. But yeah, there's a lot lots of little things like that that I'm gonna need to go in and fix. So that's um yeah that that, that I'll accept the responsibility for that one I think. <laughs> oh yes, so yes we're talking about Mike. So yes, he he's we, that will that will get us sand, which will get us quartz, which will get us silicon, and also sand, which will get us glass. And those are things that we need in quite large quantities down on the bus, because down here, as you can see, we've got we've got the silicon coming in at the moment. It comes along here like this, tum -tum 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 -tum. quite a long way along here. Then it gets split off here, where it's brought up to be made into electronics components, which are made into red circuits. And then those electronic, electronic components are also being made into uh, military science and being passed down here onto the bus to be used for goodness knows what else later on. We're also using this, the silicon for something else, I'm sure of it. Either that or I've just built all this bus up without unnecessarily. No, over here, silicon is also needed for making solar panels. So we need a good supply of it along here. So that's being brought in nicely. And then being passed along here just because, you know, it's a bus. That's how you do buses. Um, I've also pulled up the uh, the silicon plant that was down here. The bit that was making silicon from the stone on the bus. Because it was in the way of the bus. And it was ugly and hideous. And just generally needed to be needed to go. So we got rid of that. And I'm very glad of it. Um, so yeah, that that's that's much better now that we're making the silicon over here at least in theory things are much much better i'm much happier with the way this is all working mike also did quite a lot of combat so we've now got a lot fewer biters up here and a few more gravestones up here so he's gone through here basically we had i think i think we had basically we'd, we'd cleared up to about here i think so he's he's, in, he's also done a load of combat cleared out this area around here and in order to make that a little bit easier for him we've now got um yeah we've now got red sniper ammunition being made off off the bus so there's a nice supply there's 500 magazines there so he can come over and he can grab all of that and i think yes we've also stopped basically stopped yeah we've basically stopped using the yellow sniper ammo because there's not really any point this isn't that expensive it's just the yellow sniper ammo plus an additional steel plate and the yellow one is already and it's not iron copper and coal isn't so yeah it's it's slightly more expensive because it requires steel but basically it's just much much better it does so much more damage um these do 125 plus 75 these do 80 plus 48 so we're looking at like double the damage maybe slightly more than double the damage from that maybe slightly less actually because the, the plus is a little bit less but yeah they do they do a lot enough more damage that they're very very worth having um this should probably wait until this chest is empty to be honest we should wire them together but that's another thing that I can, um, maybe i'll try and remember to uh, stick it on the to-do to -do list and pick that one up in the next uh, in, in the next stream Mike found a weapons cache as well. I don't know where that was. Um, he told us about. It. He, he did tell, tell us about it, and chat told me about it. But I wasn't. I misunderstood. I thought I didn't hear Mike telling me about it because I wasn't listening to him. Um, what can you? Do? What can I say? Um, I thought chat were talking because it was just after I'd launched a rocket. I thought chat were talking was talking about the um, the one you find in Norvis Orbit. You find all this cached stuff up here. And in in space exploration 0.5, there's a cat. There's a um, a chest on the, in in this in the area up here with all of the weapons with with a load of weapons in it so now mike has a portable rail gun which is l absolutely lethal against the biter nests um and it's probably only a matter of time until he accidentally takes out half the uh, half the base with it so we'll see <laughs> we'll see how long we survive with that but actually while i'm up here let's distract ourselves from what mike's been doing once again um the the out the the uh, the ruins you find when you go up into orbit have changed rather a lot since uh, 0.5. Um, in 0.5, is a little area, a little sort of satellite area made up of the um, what's this stuff called? The uh, I can't see, I can't see any of it because it's all got wrecks on it. But the uh, the slightly better version of the uh, scaffolding. Um, 
and then with with a few with a few of the flat solar panels, uh, some, I think there were some blue chests or something like that, and and and, and a little weapons cache. Now it's got all of these all of this destroyed uh, wreckage, these ruins and things. It looks absolutely it looks absolutely great. I really like this. It looks, and rocket fragments, stuff like that, ruin. Um, and then there's a few actual bits and pieces up here that are actually functional. Like there's a um, there's a, a radar construction pile on there. Those are great. I don't know what we'll actually do with that because whilst they're absolutely fantastic, a single one not so useful. There's even a green uh, a green buffer chest, so that's going to be slightly useful. Um, and of course some of the flat solar panels, those are great. We'll use some of them for uh, for generating the power. And quite a lot of the um, deep space transport belts as well. Now, I didn't really use these very much in my uh, in my previous playthrough because I just used the ones that I found on the, um, on the wreck out in Fenestra. And there was a decent number of them there, but not enough that I felt like I could make massive buses or anything out of them and they were just expensive enough they didn't feel worth making so I didn't really use them maybe I will this time we'll see because they are they are significantly faster they they do 90 items per second ah okay right this this, this is this is slightly interesting let's have a look at the, uh, the different types of belt we can make in in this game so we've got the um in, in because we've got Crastorio 2 we've got five tiers of ground based belts yellow 15 30 45 60 and then 90 for the superior ones, which is really good. That's, that, that's going to be really useful um, once we finally have um, immerse, Immersium and also the um, uh, the Iridium and possibly other things, the heavy bearings. I'm not going to look any more than that because, you know, spoilers. Um, but then you get the space transportation belts. These are only 45 per second, which is the same, only the same speed as a blue belt. And I did find that they were a bit disappointing in my previous um, run, in the 0.5 run. And I didn't even have the extra tiers at that point. So they were a bit meh. So these, having these ones available as well, which do 90 seconds, they're, they're the same speed as these ones, will be potentially be, actually be quite useful. And maybe we will start using them. But they do take um, quite a lot of stuff, and, and including Naquium. So you can kind of see why I didn't build any of those in the previous run. It just Whilst I had all of this stuff available, it didn't feel worth it. So I just... I just didn't bother. Um, but yeah, so there. But there's a decent number of them there that we might f we might find. There's a little sort of a bottleneck somewhere where it's useful having a belt that's twice as fast as all the ones around it, or just use the really really long underground um, space belts because there those were fantastic. I used a couple of them because I needed to go a long way underground and they can go much further than the normal ones. A little bit of space rail, not enough to be actually be useful, but yeah, a little bit and a telescope. So. That's nice. We can uh, we can use that to um, to go off and, and do a little bit of the uh, get started on the astro research. Also, quite a few tanks and so, oh, there's a bit more um, space rail here. Space rail here. So there's another there's another hundred there. Again, not really enough to be useful. And some space platform, um, some barrels of uh, oily fluidy things. So that that could be quite useful because that there's actually there's some heavy oil there. So that might allow us to bootstrap the um, the coal liquefaction without needing to take up any barrels of our own. That's quite nice. Oh, and there's some weapons over here as well. So the bio gun and the, and the cryo gun. Um, a bit of, bit of uh, um, vulcanite over here. So we'll see. I mean, I, th I have a feeling that the um, the coal liquefaction recipe is a bit worse in uh, Crastorio 2. So maybe we won't be, uh, be using that. Oh, some more speed belts, uh, space transport belts up here. Quite a lot of them. <clears throat> that might be enough to actually be useful. We shall see. So back down to earth with a bang. Yeah, so as I said, Mike has been running around with a railgun, which is um, not ideal, but we haven't been able to take it off him yet. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, yes, it's, but that did, did allow him to clear these biter bases out up here significantly more quickly and with only three or four deaths. Uh, we'll talk about deaths in a little while, of course. Um, he says he put in a power station. Oh, that's this one here, I think. Yeah, so another power station here. This is clearly where all of the, um, the wind turbines have gone. Now, these things, as I was saying earlier, are a bit pathetic. They produce um, a whole uh, 20 kilowatts each. So you need you'd need literally to have literally thousands of these for them to actually be remotely useful. Whereas one of these steam engines produces uh, actually only 750 kilowatts, but yeah. So, but still, that's a lot a lot better, a lot more compact, a lot easier to put together. But it does require a supply of fuel, of course. Uh, so what we've got here, we've got oh, oh I see. So he's put 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 the um he's put put put, put he's put a power station by a coal mine that makes quite a lot of sense actually so we've got the coal being pulled out here going into the um into this storehouse as a as a buffer and then it can be passed out to the station over here and also up to up here as well um he's not putting any sort of prioritization on those but that probably doesn't matter 
It's also pulling in wood from these um, this array of greenhouses around here. Now the greenhouses are there to try and catch the pollution. I can't help feeling they're probably going to be inadequate. Let's have a look. Um, yes, they're very very inadequate. We're going to so we're going to need to come up here with the um, with the air purifiers and put some of those around here as well. But that's not going to be too difficult. We can put put in another outpost station here and then just a belt that goes all the way around the outside here with the with with air purifiers all the way around and then just deals with it before. As I've shown you on all of the other ones, all of the other areas we've been uh, we've been faffing around with. Um, he also was very happy about having done all the things he wanted to do. So well done there. Um, and yes, as I meant, as I did mention, he also put the um, the red belts onto the bus down here, which was um, <coughs> tidy, tidying up after me a little bit. <coughs> yes. Um, nobody's dealt with the um, the, the warehouses of shame yet, so there's still quite a lot of stuff in there. But we've we've made sort of little bits of a start on that. But there's there's so many different things in this one in particular that I sort of went looked at it and went, oh, I can't be bothered. But eventually, we'll probably tidy this up. All this um, biomatter should be put over, should be um, put down for being made into um, medikits and and um, science packs. So at some point, we'll need to do something a bit more sensible with that. But in general, all of this stuff just needs to find its way back down onto the bus and get used in slightly more sensible ways. So that's what everyone's been up to. Um, the final thing I want to talk about is my what my plan for next time. So there's been lots of little things I've been pointing at as I've gone around here. So little things that need fixing because I've been looking at them a little bit more closely than I have been before, I guess. Uh, so one of the other things I want to do now is get the um, the yellow tech cards up and running. What are they called? Um, no. Here we go, rocket tech cards, um, which is going to require electric furnaces. Now, electric furnaces I have made. They're on the on, on the bus somewhere. They're being they they t I know they take red circuits, so I might be able to spot them because of that. Uh, yes, here we go. <laughs> it actually worked. That's amazing. So here we've got red. We've got the electric furnaces now because this is Crastorio 2. In order to make an electric furnace, you need to make a burner furnace, then make a steel furnace to make a to make a, an electric furnace, and then they get going to there. So I'm probably not going to take them from here. I think I'll leave this this setup here as the place where people get them from when they need to set up a smeltery. Um, so I think that that can stay as and where it is. What it, what I'll do is I'll set up another similar thing over here, producing the electric furnaces, but then passing them straight off to be made into science cards, uh, science packs. We need the speed modules, and this is why um, Mark was making solid fuel, as I mentioned earlier, and why we needed a lot more electronic components, and why I was worried about the ele electronic circuits. So we need a lot more of all of that coming through. We'll get all of that built up and make the uh, we can make the speed modules. Um, blank tech cars are already making, and the satellite telemetry. Is being produced by the uh, the rocket the satellite rocket launches over here. So we've got a, a chest here with um, 500 in it so far. We're, we're gradually making more of that. There needs to be a, um, a, a, a an inserter there to unload it onto this belt. But let's copy that one, and then I can rotate it, put it in there, and it'll all have, already have the uh, programming on it. Um, yeah, so that'll that'll then pass the pass them over to here. They'll they'll go down onto the bus, and we'll pick them up down here somewhere and turn them into science. That's fine. We can do that, and so and then we can pass the science back up the bus to do well more science. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, so those those tech cards, I don't see anything too difficult in there. However, we are going to need to get stone in order to be able to make those for all of the furnaces. Uh, we're going to need to remake the the furnace column in order to make those and I'm going to need to think about the rate that everything's being made at as well and have a look at what sort of speed we're making all of the other tech cards at so that I can try and have it reasonably well balanced because there's no point in making the red ones at one every second if you're only making the yellow ones one every five seconds you'll just run out you'll just run out of yellow ones and and yeah it, it, it's all a bit of a disappointment so We'll need to we need to make sure that's vaguely balanced and just try and keep everything running at similar speeds but that I don't expect that to be tif too difficult so that's going to be what we're getting up to on uh, on Monday. So make, please make sure you come along and join us then. Uh, that'll be the the next uh, Factorio stream. There'll be a um, there'll be a Dyson Sphere program stream on Wednesday as ever, and um, you know other videos coming out here and hither and yon as 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 I actually have them produced. So you know there's there's always stuff on the channel, isn't there? There's always always something to watch. So I hope you've enjoyed this 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 video, and you'll come back for the next ones. Don't forget to check out the channel sponsor. That's trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays. Link in the description, and um, use the code Lawrence Plays to get twenty percent off your uh, hosting for, uh, for whatever games you're playing. I know they definitely do um, Factorio and Minecraft. We've been using them for Factorio and it's working very, very nicely. Very happy with that. So yeah, check them out. Get 20% off. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.